Good morning, Mademoiselle Baptiste. My name is Colonel Hargrove. I'm from the Office of Strategic Services. I heard you've been looking for us. To be honest, we've been looking for you. We just didn't know it. Now, I'm sorry to be crass, but while we've been aware of your brother Jacques for some time, we had never heard of Manon Baptiste until you made contact with our station chief yesterday morning. We knew your brother occasionally worked with another assistance member. I'm just sorry to say that I assumed it was another man. He was wise to keep your identity a secret. I've seen several good operatives denounced by people they thought they could trust. With both your anonymity and your brother gone, you could have easily opted to return to a quiet civilian life. You could have even collaborated. Turning over those papers you collected to the Gestapo would have earned you a lot of special privileges under the German authority. Instead, you committed yourself to a life on the run, away from everyone and everything you've ever known. From the looks of your G2 debriefing, you and your brother found yourselves in some pretty hairy situations during the early days of the occupation. And it's exactly that kind of experience we need to employ if our intelligence operations are to stand a chance. We're preparing to launch a major assault in North Africa very soon. Unfortunately, all the men we've sent down to do reconnaissance have had their covers blown. Now, as serendipity would have it, we've learned that a Vichy propaganda magazine has sent a female correspondent all the way to Casablanca to profile the brave men of the Africa Corps. We want you to intercept this woman and take her place. It should provide the ideal cover for getting in there and seeing what Rommel is up to. And if the opportunity presents itself, we want you to take action to disrupt his operations. If successful, your exfiltration will be by airplane, specifically in an old Northrop Alpha that's perfectly suited for this kind of special operation. The pilot is a lieutenant in the Air Transport Command who's been given strict orders not to even look at you, as we don't want to compromise your identity in any way. You'll be briefed on the rest of the specifics during your transit to the African continent. It's a privilege for the OSS that you want to join our ranks. Be careful and good luck. I'll see you when you get back. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here taking a look at Medal of Honor Underground because all the other games I've been wanting to check out recently have all been buggy messes. That's genuinely the reason why there's been so many PlayStation 1 games being on this channel for a while because there are just so many buggy things. I was going to buy Deathloop but apparently not only according to the few reviewers that I have some faith in, they all say that it doesn't even come close to living up to something like Prey, but it's also incredibly buggy. Which is kind of funny because this game ended up being a lot more buggy than I expected it to be for a PlayStation 1 game. But anyway, so, Medal of Honor Underground. First person shooter with Steven Spielberg at the helm. He was at the helm for three games, this is the second one. And it's about a French Resistance member... Uh, basically failing at a mission, then becoming inordinately successful at a mission, joining the American version of the CIA back in the 40s, it was the OSS, and going around the world doing missions to stop the Nazi war machine as effectively as possible. Can't argue with the concept, but i got to tell you, man, they did an absolutely fantastic job with this game's presentation. The cutscenes that you get before the general mission, which is like the set of four levels, comprises a mission. Really well done. The voice acting is great outside of the girl that you're playing as. Throwing grenades is not her strong suit. Oh good lord, it sounds awful when she tries to throw grenades. It sounds like she's trying to do something else. Uh, there's the, the, yeah, just the general voice acting of the mooks is pretty damn good. And then you get to the actual missions themselves, which have these fantastically laid out and great looking locations with tons of variety to them they communicate just the the atmosphere of what they're going for really well and despite the fact that they're really linear they don't feel really linear it feels like an absolutely natural progression and i can't help but really appreciate the game for the fantastic environmental work that it's done here Seriously, this is a PlayStation 1 game, but it feels above and beyond that. Ha ha, <laughs> I just realized the pun, because there is a game called Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, and I have played that on this channel. Whoops! Uh, but still, the environmental design, really damn good. The animations, 
really damn good. Like seriously, wandering around holding this gun and the reloads feel like an in-between between a PlayStation 1 and a PlayStation 2 game. The way that soldiers fall down and grab their legs and lose their helmets when they get shot in the different body parts are all great. The way doors open, the way that um, certain set pieces are handled. It genuinely feels really natural and it's incredibly well done. And it, it just looks the part overall. I mean, as much as a PS1 game that's incredibly linear can look the part, it manages to look the part and it does it with grace. It is genuinely just a really nice looking game. And it's also helped out by the fact that it's got a bunch of really nice music. Sets the tone perfectly, has just some great atmosphere to it, and genuinely just helps add to the entire feeling of playing through the entire game. Just genuinely a really good job on all fronts when it comes to the presentation, and it runs alright too. If you get a few uh, enemies on screen and once the game does start dropping frames, but you know, PlayStation 1 game that looks this good, it's hard to blame them for that. And it actually kind of helps with gunplay as well, because despite the fact that you've got a lot of health, this game can be kind of difficult. The controls... Actually, the controls are surprisingly forward-thinking. If you set the control type to Type D, you can walk around and aim with the left and right stick like you would a modern first-person shooter. Aiming with L2 becomes more of a GoldenEye style cursor than anything else, but it still works fine. And then you've got uh, swapping weapons using the action button to reload and stuff like that, which is all like PlayStation 1 game. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt for the rest of it, considering how forward thinking the rest of it is. And the game does control fine, although it can be quite hard to aim, especially when you're running a bit low on ammo, because they do not drop much ammo in this game. It can be a bit rough. And so as a result, you really do need to aim for those headshots a lot, and this isn't like Call of Duty where you can just actively aim almost uh, uh, really accurately even when you're firing from the hip. Just point in someone's direction, hold the fire button and hope it goes for the best. No, this game does not do that. Whether it be the pistol, which does allow you to get perfect shots, but is also really hard to aim, or the SMGs that they've got in the game, which actually simulate muzzle climb by making it so that your, your bullets start hitting higher than your crosshair, the longer than you fire it for, which is, again, really forward thinking for a game of this kind. Thankfully, the enemies are kind of dumb, but there are a lot of them, and you can take a lot of shots, but when they start bringing out the dudes with the assault rifles, they can start cutting you down within a couple of seconds. And you need to be doing a pretty heavy pop-in-and-out-of-cover sort of gameplay thing. And this game even has leaning, but the one thing I don't like about this game's controls is that the leaning is bloody pointless. It's such a little difference from leaning to not leaning that it doesn't really help you out in the slightest. You're genuinely better off just scraping in and out of cover and aiming manually because it's such a tiny lean that it doesn't make a difference to the game's controls at all. And so as a result, you're kind of just doing a lot of scraping in and out of cover, taking pot shots of the enemy, hoping that you hit them in the head and knock them over because, well, you kind of need to do that in order to save as much ammo as possible. And sometimes you'll be really good at it, and sometimes you'll just have no ammo left and you'll have to go up and hit them with a melee attack. But there is a difference to this one, though. It isn't all just massive, um... It isn't all just massive shootouts. There are a, there are a lot of segments in this game where you take on a disguise. You wander around, guards see you, you show them your papers, and you can just move on. It also goes to show that great attention to detail the rest of this game has. Like, there's points where you carry around a camera, and if you take a photo of someone, they'll actively do a pose, which is just kind of funny. But again, it's just that nice little level of detail. And even then, like, if you take a photograph of someone, they'll be blinded. They'll hold their hand up to their eyes. It's so well done. And it would be genuinely great if these sections actually worked. <laughs> For some reason, Medal of Honor Underground is really buggy in these sections. I cannot tell you why. You walk up to someone and you'll show them that your paper's twice and it just won't work. You'll walk up to someone and they'll be like, uh, hey, why don't you speak? Why don't you say anything? Why don't you, uh, why don't you tell me what you're doing here? And it seems random what soldiers will do this. So you'll just be going along trying to follow the game's rules and one of these guards will suddenly break it and there'll be a three-way firefight going on but the three ways are all on you, and you'll be mincemeat before you can say shalom. And even then, sometimes 
the game's design of these sections is just oof. Like, you'll have to... Uh, the way you'll have to do it is that there's this one in the third mission where you have to go around... Um, Brain, welcome me here. You have to go around, like, this uh, this temple and you have to kill these, uh, these archaeologists as you go because they're Nazi archaeologists trying to change history. Good reason to kill some uh, uh, archaeologists. I'll give you that. But it also makes it kind of a pain in the neck. Mainly because you have to kill everybody as you go basically in order to really stand a chance because you will eventually have to start a gunfight in front of a bunch of dudes the alarm's gonna go off and they're all gonna start swarming you so you have to actively be going around uh going behind them and then shooting them in the back i didn't even know you could shoot them in the back until i saw a, a youtube video doing it but yeah sometimes the sections just don't work in fact a lot of this game doesn't work that well now i don't know if some of this is emulator glitches and some of this is PlayStation 1 game glitches. So, there, there are some things I'm willing to give them the for the doubt on, but this is just how I was playing the game. Like, how it's really hard to tell what's in front of another thing sometimes. How your weapon will just disappear behind something. Like how a door to an objective won't open. You'll be standing there hammering away at the button that, and it'll even show you on screen, like, press the action button to open the door so that you don't miss it. Which is a really nice touch, but at the same time you'll just be hammering away at that button on that door and it just won't open. And you'll have to go away and come back like two or three times to actually get it to open. This happened to me multiple times in multiple, like, objectives. This sort of, like, just breaking the scripting thing going on. And it was kind of annoying. It's also kind of annoying that the game doesn't really tell you what to do sometimes. There'll be this thing that says, like, destroy bunker supplies. An objective in a certain level. And it's like, okay, what are the bunker supplies? The game doesn't tell you. So you have to go around shooting random things, hoping that you'll find the thing that you're looking for. And it's just annoying sometimes. Because when the game's working right, it's working really right. The levels are linear, but they don't feel that way. They give you prompts, which are like, hey, you need to do this or continue on with this. And it can be very hard to get turned around. The shooting is a lot of fun. The stealthing around as a random civilian thing can be really good too. But then it'll just fall apart with an objective that you don't know how to do. Or something will bug out. Or you'll need to do a really precise shot in order to not alert every enemy in the level and you just can't pull it off. And it can get, get, get a bit rough like that. Which kind of sucks. Because if it weren't for those, like, just inconsistencies in the game design or the programming or what have you, this would be way more enjoyable. But by the end of the fourth mission, I just found myself not wanting to play anymore because I just kept having to deal with crap that I didn't really want to have to deal with. When it works, it works really well. When it doesn't, it's a massive pain in the ass. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about the whole thing. There's also apparently a lot of different, like, extra modes and hidden missions and stuff like that. Including a mode called, I quote, Wacky Taxi. You have 60 seconds to finish a level and the only way you can get more time is by killing guards. Which frankly, not only sounds brilliant, but it seems like a predecessor to like, uh... What was it called in Max Payne? It was like New York Minute or something like that, right? But still, yeah, I just found the game to be a little bit too, I don't know, buggy? Again, might have been a couple of emulator glitches, might have been a couple of game glitches, I don't know. But that's just my experience, that's what I'm telling you about. Would have been damn good back on the PlayStation 1 days, though. This has been Blue Maxima, I'll see you all next time.
Identification. Your identification. Anything for me. Anything for a lady. Namaste, continue. 